Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay as we saw in the last class uh, uh, we, we we saw that the uh, thermoacoustic instabilities were uh, happening because of the feedback between the acoustic field and the combustion process and we uh, uh, looked at the consequence of thermoacoustic instabilities to the hardware in terms of the uh, uh, combustors and uh, uh, power plants and we also looked at the consequences for the aerospace propulsion systems then we looked at different mechanisms which are responsible for uh, causing this feedback and how we could uh, control these oscillations either passively or actively. So uh, the subject has uh, is basically because of coupling between acoustics and combustion so it is important that we build up a good background on acoustics. So the first part of the class as I mentioned last time deals with uh, acoustics. So acoustics deals with uh, generation propagation and effects of sound. We will be uh, speaking generally about the first two aspects that is the uh, generation and propagation although a lot of researchers work on the effects of sound on various things like uh, the, the subjects like psychological acoustics and, 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 and so on a lot of study on how sound affects newborn babies how sound affects the moods of people how uh, uh, sound uh, how the environmental sound affect the mood of the community and so on but we will not look at that we will uh, restrict ourselves to generation and propagation in fact uh, it is much easier to study the propagation of sound rather than uh, generation of sound because generation of sound is a much more complicated topic. So it is uh, easier to do easy things first so we will start out with how sound propagates then we will look at how sound is uh, generated. Uh, so I must also emphasize that sound should not be a misnomer for frequencies in the range of human perception that is we can hear some sounds but that is just not uh, we should not restrict the definition of sound to it. Uh, it can fall into uh, the actual uh, definition of sound can be a lot more general than that. So sound could be uh, defined as a disturbance of pressure or you could say it even more general way a disturbance of normal stress which propagates at finite speed in a compressible medium and, and compressible medium could be solid or liquid or gas uh, we will mainly be dealing with gas in this course. So let me write down this definition. So we say that sound is uh, like a disturbance or perturbation in pressure or even more uh, general fashion normal stress which propagates at finite speed in a compressible medium it can be solid or liquid or gas. So in, in this class we are going to primarily deal with this. So uh, we, we can also have study uh, propagation of sound in plasmas and also things like photon gas and so on. So uh, sound is uh, 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 so the definition of sound is the definition of sound is much more uh, general than what uh, we think uh, that is in terms of what we can perceive as sound. Uh, so uh, in this class we are studying how sound propagates uh, in, in gases because in combustors we have uh, uh, gases we have um, fuel and air 
burning and producing uh, products of combustion such as carbon dioxide and water vapor. So, all this is uh, a gas. So, we are looking uh, to study um, uh, propagation of sound in um, gaseous medium. So, uh, there are basically you must be knowing you must have studied in school there are two types of waves the longitudinal waves as well as transverse waves. So, there are two types of waves uh, we can say longitudinal and and transverse. So, uh, the longitudinal uh, waves is more like a uh, series of compressions and rarefactions propagating. So, uh, you can have a mechanical analogy in which you think of uh, some kind of spring which you compress then the compression propagates then rarefaction propagates. So, if I draw a picture. So, let us say I have a spring this way and I compress it and I could have regions where this spring is very compressed followed by regions where it is rarefied. So, you can have compression regions and rarefaction regions followed by compression regions. So, this is like the mechanical analogy of sound. You can all also have transverse waves you know the electromagnetic waves are transverse waves, uh, but in general uh, gases do not uh, support that. Uh, although strictly speaking um, that, that statement is true only for invasive flows, but in general uh, we have compression and rarefaction waves which is the longitudinal waves happening in uh, gases and that is what we are uh, going to study about. So, we are uh, primarily dealing with uh, longitudinal wave propagation. You can have uh, a, a another example of transverse waves would be you know you have a vibrating string you take a guitar and pluck the string or you take a cloth line and pluck the string you can get waves like this. So, here the direction of motion the uh, direction of the propagation of the wave is in this direction, but the particle is moving perpendicular to it. So, that is what happens in transverse wave in transverse wave you have uh, the particle motion perpendicular to the direction of motion of the wave in a uh, compression or rarefaction wave that is a longitudinal wave you have the wave propagating and this uh, motion of the gas particles also happen along the direction of the propagation. So, that is the main difference and uh, we in sound is uh, longitudinal waves that is uh, the particle moves along the direction of propagation of the wave. So, that is what we are going to study. So, uh, uh, let us look at air as the medium. So, we have some kind of ambient pressure. So, the pressure here is one atmosphere and we are looking at disturbances about this ambient medium. So, if you <coughs> draw a graph let us say this is time and pressure. So, if you have quiescent media that is the if you have silence you will have constant pressure silence is just constant atmospheric pressure, but then you could have sound then the pressure will fluctuate and it may fluctuate like this or like this or like this. So, you would have uh, a variety of different frequencies. So, frequency is the uh, rate at which the uh, pressure fluctuates and you can also have uh, amplitude. Amplitude is the uh, how much the pressure fluctuates. So, we uh, so we typically think of uh, silence that is uh, uh, the sound is about the silence. The silence is there is a, a steady base pressure quiescent pressure about which the pressure uh, fluctuates. So, uh, what are the different kinds of sound what are uh, 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 sounds that we experience in our daily lives what is their decibel levels and so on let us look at that. So, uh, uh, we basically um, think of pressure as the, the total pressure the net pressure equal to it is a function of time as well as position. So, this is time T is T r is position. So, we can think of it as a base pressure P bar the over bar stands for the mean or the time average quantity plus P prime prime stands for the fluctuating quantity of. Uh, so, this is the mean pressure or the base pressure. 
this is the fluctuating pressure. Uh, strictly speaking, all fluctuation need not be sound. You can also have fluctuations due to vorticity waves and entropy waves, but now we are going to study about sound and this is the fluctuating pressure that, uh, uh, so we are only looking at the acoustic component at this point. Uh, so uh, the minimum detectable pressure typically by human beings, by the human ear is of the order of, of the order of 10 power minus 5 Pascal. Of course, it varies from different uh, people to people. Some people can detect more feeble sound than others, some people cannot, but typical uh, uh, sound that humans can detect is uh, minimum detectable sound by humans is of the order of 10 power minus 5 Pascals. So, uh, let us look at, uh, uh, we will look at various uh, uh, types of sounds and so on. So, before we do that, we have to look at two quantities, one is amplitude, the other one is frequency. So, amplitude is how much is the fluctuation above the base pressure, so that is the amplitude. So, th those amplitude and frequency are the key characteristics that define a sound wave. Amplitude and frequency. So, amplitude is again how much the uh, pressure fluctuates. Uh, frequency is the number of oscillations per second of the acoustic wave that happens around this p bar. Frequency is the So, here we will use the term acoustic pressure and fluctuating pressure interchangeably and uh, the acoustic pressure is often uh, defined in terms of a log scale. Now, why do we do log scale? Because our human uh, um, hearing is, uh, is kind of logarithmic. logarithmic. So, if you uh, double the volume in your uh, loudspeaker in your, um, uh, in your stereo at home, you would not perceive it as the volume doubled. Uh, you, uh, so, it is more on a logarithmic scale. So, because of that we have a definition of a quantity called decibels. So, acoustic pressure is measured in decibels, it is uh, written as d b small d uh, capital B. So, acoustic pressure in decibels is uh, defined as Twenty log p over p reference to the base ten. So we take logarithm of pressure divided by reference pressure with respect to the base ten and multiply it by twenty. Now, what is the reference pressure in air? The reference pressure is twenty micropascals. But this. 2 into 10 power minus 5 Pascals. So, we are dealing with air, but in water I must mention that the reference pressure is 1 micro Pascal, uh, I mean it is just a convention. Oh. So, this is, uh, this reference is typically uh, 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 a picked so that that is the lowest sound the human, uh, that is the order of the lowest sound the human ear can hear. So, uh, here uh, human ear can hear. So, next we uh, speak about, uh, uh, so typically the amplitude is expressed in, in decibels and frequency is denoted in hertz. So, amplitude in decibels and frequency hertz. So, hertz is uh, same as cycles per second, the number of cycles per second. frequency is expressed as hertz, 
which is also called sometimes a CPS cycle. Per second. So, we have different types of sound, we have audible sound, sounds which are not audible, but are at a very high frequency or uh, frequencies which are very low, uh, which we cannot hear. So, if you look at the spectrum, so typical human beings can hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Uh, so, this is the audible range. And below this, there is infrasonic sound or infrasound, and above this, we have ultrasound. So, ultrasound is a very important branch of science, same with infrasound, uh, and both have applications in uh, various fields. Infrasound is application in geophysics in terms of uh, 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 when we talk about uh, earthquakes and its measurement and so on, as well as. Uh, they use in infrasound to detect if uh, in the archaeological applications where, where if some cities are buried inside you create sound wave low frequency sound waves and you try to image what is reflected off and try to see uh, if there is something like a archae uh, archaeological uh, site you have a city hidden or something. Uh, many animals can hear uh, have a different he hearing range for example, elephants can hear uh, low frequency sounds. some other animals can hear high frequency sounds and uh, humans. Uh, Young people can hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. As you grow older, uh, the hearing deteriorates, so your uh, range can get uh, get narrower. Uh, ultrasound has also a lot of applications in uh, doing things like mammogram, uh, where uh, people are trying to detect cancer, or ultrasound scanning, where you try to look at uh, whether the newborn baby is healthy and so on. So we try to do a scan, and uh, you, you send sound, see how the sound is scattered and reflected image that and look at the uh, uh, picture to get the idea of the health of the newborn baby. Uh, so, typically acoustics deals with low amplitude sound the linear acoustic that means the, uh, uh, the uh, amplitudes are very, uh, very low, but when the amplitudes are very high the acoustic wave would become steeper and steeper and you tend to form shock waves. So, that is the subject of non-linear acoustics. In our class mostly we deal with uh, linear acoustics, low amplitude acoustics uh, and not really with shock waves. So, just to get an idea of uh, various levels of um, uh, sound uh, involved. Um, so, if you are talking about uh, calm breathing, very somebody is sitting very calmly and, and breathing, you, the breathing itself will be very faint and that would be of the order of 10 dB. Uh, the normal conversation. would be of the order of 55 dB, well perhaps 55 to 60 dB if you have animated loud conversation that could be tending to 60 dB. Uh, city traffic could be around 80 dB, I guess it depends on which city in the loud Indian cities it may be slightly higher. Uh, vacuum cleaner would also make around 80 dB. Uh, land mower would make 90 dB, uh, a, uh, the whistle of a train, the horn of a train if you are about 500 feet away would be also 90 dB. A train itself, when it is moving, it is probably making about 100 dB, uh, and uh, a rock concert would be around 120 or 115 uh, to 130 dB, and uh, your threshold of pain. It is when the ear starts hurting, that is about 125 dB.
and um, fireworks would be like 140 dB. So this is uh, I mean these are rough figures they are given uh, just to give you an idea of uh, the typical uh, sound pressure levels uh, seen in uh, various day-to-day uh, uh, -day situations. I think uh, if you have uh, anything louder than 140 dB uh, you are in the or, or if you hear that kind of sound even um, uh, you are in the serious uh, uh, there is a serious danger of losing your hearing. If you are even listening to rock concerts regularly your hearing will come down. In fact uh, it is uh, studies have shown that musicians have low hearing because they are uh, every day listening to very loud sound in their own concerts and so on. So this is just a rough idea. Uh, we, this is not our basic interest we uh, our interest is to study uh, not to study uh, about hearing and so on but really to look at how sound propagates inside combustors but for that we are trying to build up a uh, uh, background in uh, acoustics in theoretical acoustics. So uh, having said this we need to be able to quantitatively describe the propagation of sound so we need to of course we have to uh, quantitatively describe the generation also. So first we are going to talk about quantitatively uh, the propagation of sound. So we need equations for that and that is the, uh, uh, that's the next half of this talk. So uh, I, I mentioned that we have to at, we are attempting to describe quantitatively the propagation of sound. So when you want to uh, describe something quantitatively we need an equation. So the equation that describes quantitatively the propagation of sound is the wave equation and uh, I just want to first of all write it so that you have an idea how it looks like and I am sure most of you have seen it. So this is the uh, classical wave equation. So this is a equation that has been studied by mathematicians for a long time and in very very great detail. So we are going to derive this from a fluid mechanics perspective. Uh, uh, this is how actually the subject of acoustics started it, it the first derivation of wave equation was from fluid mechanics. Uh, later on uh, the other uh, approaches to uh, acoustics came and, and, and uh, but in this class we are going to describe uh, it based on fluid mechanics. Uh, in, in fact in the 80s this approach came back very strongly because uh, of the uh, uh, success of aeroacoustics and thermoacoustics where you have to deal with the uh, generation of sound and for the generation of sound you have to study fluid mechanics. So I think in this class we are eventually going to deal with generation of sound so we will stick with the fluid mechanics approach. So uh, uh, to simplify matters I will be deriving this in one dimension in fact this equation that I have written is in one space dimension uh, x but we can very easily do it for three dimension in fact I will write down the results for uh, three dimension. So uh, this is a partial differential equation popularly called PDE partial differential equation and we are writing a partial differential equation for the acoustic pressure. You can also write wave equation which will be another partial differential equation for the acoustic velocity or the density and so on although writing in terms of the pressure is the most popular form. Now how do we derive this wave equation that is the next step. To derive the wave equation we will use the basic equations of fluid mechanics. What are the basic equations of fluid mechanics? They are continuity equation, momentum equation and energy equation. So we use the they are, they are called conservation equations. So For a gas, we will also need uh, the state equation, so we will use this. The moment we speak about continuity equation, 
what comes to your mind is suddenly you will think rho a v equal to constant. So, I am uh, quite worried about this because we are conditioned to be thinking that this is the conservation equation, but you are dealing with uh, uh, this is true only for steady flows only for steady flows and acoustics is primarily an unsteady phenomena. So, we would be in quite a bit of trouble if we use the equation rho v equal to constant we have to you know uncondition ourselves to not to be using that we have to use some other form of equation for continuity which would actually be able to deal with unsteadiness. So, that is a differential form of continuity equation where you do not make the uh, assumption that the flow is steady. So, similarly we have to use the unsteady form of the momentum equation. So, I am not assuming any background uh, for you on fluid mechanics. So, I will derive the continuity and momentum equations from scratch, uh, but I will not do the most general derivation I will do a simple one dimensional uh, equation derivation of the one dimensional equation uh, now and if you are interested you can uh, go ahead and um, look at fluid mechanics textbook to see how a general three dimensional equation for all kinds of uh, uh, situation could be derived, but here I am going to restrict myself to uh, just do uh, one dimensional equation. So, we are looking at mass conservation or the continuity equation. So, let us look at a one dimensional control volume and look at a station x and the station x plus d x and we see what happens to the flow that happens across these stations. So, uh, we want to um, uh, if you think uh, about what should be the conservation law uh, you can say that you know certain if certain mass flow rate is coming in and certain mass flow rate is going out the rate of change of mass flow rate in the control volume will be equal to the rate of mass accumulation. So, mass flow rate in minus mass flow rate out equal to d by d t of mass in the control volume that is the very simple statement of uh, con uh, conservation of mass. So, we are following a control volume approach uh, you can also have a, a, a particle approach that is Lagrangian approach, but here we are going to follow a control volume approach or Eulerian approach. So, in this control volume which is bounded by x and x plus delta x. So, we must emphasize that we are dealing with compressible flow. We will say mass flow rate. So, that would be like mass flow per second in that is happening at x minus mass flow rate out which will be at x plus uh, dx no, delta x this would be equal to so we take the uh, cross section area as 1 we can also take it as a or some kind of thing we will we'll simply keep it as 1 just to keep things simple. So, uh, uh, this represents the rate of change of mass in the control volume. The volume of the control volume is delta x times 1 you multiply it by density rho you get the mass and rate of change of that is dou by dou t. So, we can uh, 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 write a Taylor expansion. Uh, so, the mass flow rate would be rho rho u times 1 okay. and the mass flow rate. So, this is what we need to look at. So, this rho u of x plus d x we can write it as rho u of x minus rho u of x plus dou by dou x of rho u times oh, 
so we can cancel this. So, uh, this should be equal to this term dou by dou t of rho delta x times 1. So, Uh, we can rewrite this as sorry I missed a minus sign so this is minus so I can rewrite it as delta x times do by do t of rho plus this is a universal law. So, whatever be the delta x we can we can choose we, we should be able to satisfy this equation for any uh, choice of delta x. So, uh, we sh uh, if, if that is the case then what is inside this bracket dou rho by dou t plus dou by dou x of rho u should be equal to 0. So, let me write that here. So, for any delta x if this equality is valid then what is given here should be equal to 0. So, our continuity equation is dou by dou t of rho plus dou by dou x of rho u equal to 0. So, this is our continuity equation in the uh, uh, if you write it in a vector form in the general 3 D uh, sense it will be dou rho by dou t plus del dot rho u equal to 0 u is now a vector and uh, I would leave that to you to derive this and if you were writing it in the Einstein notation or the index notation then we can uh, write this as dou rho by dou t plus dou by dou x i of rho u i equal to 0. So, this is the um, sorry this is the vector form and this is the index index notation this is one dimensional ok. So, now we have derived the conservation of mass equation and the next step is to derive the conservation of momentum equation rather the conservation of linear momentum. conservation of linear momentum. So, we uh, must have studied in school that the this can be expressed as f equal to m a and that is the uh, 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 Newton's law, but in a fluid we have uh, uh, this has to be written slightly differently. So, uh, what we say is and, and we are going to do it uh, in a Eulerian framework. So, what we can say is uh, some of the external forces is equal to rate of change of momentum inside the control volume plus change in momentum flux across the boundaries. So, that is what the statement would be in the Eulerian framework and this can be uh, this is equivalent to uh, the usual statement in the uh, 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 Lagrangian framework and the theorems which show the equivalence of that, but I am not going to go into any of that, but a standard class in fluid mechanics would deal with these things. So, uh, let me write this statement. Uh, sum of external forces is equal to rate of change of momentum inside the control volume plus change in momentum flux across the control surface. So, uh, so this uh, uh, what I have written words in the right hand side can be just written as in equation form as dou by dou t of momentum 
inside plus momentum flux out minus momentum flux in. So, uh, this uh, term dou by dou t of momentum inside plus momentum flux out minus momentum flux in that would be equal to the sum of the external forces. So, let us try to evaluate what this term is that is right hand side. So, this would be equal to again we consider a one dimensional duct with a unit cross section area just for convenience, but you can have any cross section area and that is just fine. So, this would be equal to one is the cross section area. So, rho times delta x uh, that is the mass times uh, times 1 that is the mass times u that is the momentum plus rho u squared at x plus delta x minus rho u rho times u times u the mass times velocity at x. Now, this should be equal to the external forces. So, the external forces are pressure forces plus viscous forces plus body forces and so on. Uh, so, we are not considering any body forces or viscous forces. So, we are looking at the inviscid fluid with no body forces. So, and pressure for actually in acoustic propagation the pressure forces will be what is dominant. So, uh, so let us be before that we try to expand this term rho u delta x plus Cancel this term. So this is the simplified form of the term. Now, external forces equal to pressure forces plus viscous forces plus body forces. So, we are not going to consider those two, we are looking at an inviscid flow with no body forces. And so, what is the net pressure force in the x direction? So, pressure times area is the force. So, here we are talking about unit area, so P times 1. So, this would be equal to P at x minus P at x plus delta x whole thing multiplied by 1 because of our unit area cross section. So, uh, this can be written as uh, P of x minus pressure at, uh, at x plus dou P by dou x into delta x. So, this will cancel. So, now if you collect these terms together this plus this. So, you will get what you get is Now, we can uh, simplify this and write it nicely. So, uh, and again as I mentioned earlier this equation should be true for any arbitrary uh, control volume uh, space delta x. So, uh, we, uh, we, uh, that, that means the term without a delta x should be 0. So, we can write this as delta x times 
dou by dou t of rho u plus dou by dou x of rho u square plus dou p dou by so we we should have uh, this equation work for any arbitrary delta x so i will drop this and say that this is the momentum equation this momentum equation is given in what is called the conservation form and this is very important for solving uh, uh, things numerically in in and computational fluid dynamics so this is uh, the momentum equation in conservation form now what we can do is to uh, get this in terms of the raw variables and uh, that is also quite useful. Uh, so that would be let us expand this term out so we can say rho times do u by dou t plus u times do rho by dou t plus u times dou by dou x of rho u plus rho u times dou u or dou x plus dou p by dou x equal to 0. Now if you see this term these two terms can be clubbed together as u times dou rho by dou t plus dou by dou x of rho u. In fact this total thing you see from here that this sum of these two terms is equal to 0 this should be equal to zero so we can drop this term and you are right left with uh, just those terms so the uh, momentum equation can now be written nicely in another form which is rho do u by do t plus u do u by do x equal to minus dou p by dou x this is the one dimensional momentum this is the one dimensional momentum conservation equation in terms of the raw variables raw variables because these are the variables that you can measure directly so we uh, we can also write this in the uh, other forms so I can write this in the vector form as follows you, you do you be dou t plus u dot del u times rho equal to minus del p in the index notation this would be rho times dou u i by dou t plus u u j dou by dou x of this would be u dot del times u i equal to minus dou p by dou x i. So this is the vector form this is the index notation or in the Einstein convention and uh, you have the one dimensional form here. So let me write that right below. So one dimensional form. So now we have derived the equations of uh, continuity and momentum and next we need a uh, de de relationship between pressure and density. So
we need a pressure density relationship. So, uh, there is a rule called two property rule in thermodynamics. A thermodynamic state is defined by two thermodynamic variables at uh, some instantaneous uh, uh, time in a uniform flow in a single phase flow. So, uh, you, you need two thermodynamic variables to that is called two property rule. You need two thermodynamic variables to describe a system. So, we can say that for example, P equal to is a pressure is a function of rho comma entropy. So, these are let us say um, you specify density and entropy uh, S equal to entropy rho is density P equal to pressure. So, in sound propagation we assume that sound is propagating in a uh, adiabatic and isentropic way. So, uh, uh, there is no there is no heat flow in and out of the particle. No heat flow in and out of a fluid particle. So, we can say S equal to some reference quantity S naught that is uh, 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 the uh, entropy is not changing. So, what we can say then is pressure equal to a function of rho comma S naught where S naught is a constant value. So, we say this is 0 for isentropic sound propagation. So, we now have a relationship let us say P equal to P of rho comma S naught. So, this is a, there is a unique relationship between there is a unique relationship between pressure and density. So, this is the uh, uh, state equation. So, this will be the So, to summarize what we have the full set of equations that we derive. So, we have the uh, conservation of mass conservation and momentum conservation will be rho times dou u by dou t plus u dou u by dou x equal to minus dou p by dou x. So, this is momentum. conservation and we have P equal to P of rho comma S naught. This is the state equation. So, we have these three equations. So, this the summary of the equation we have conservation of mass, uh, momentum conservation and uh, state equation. So, uh, so, we have derived the uh, uh, basic equations of fluid mechanics. Now, I did not derive the energy equation there is a reason for that. Uh, in fact, uh, for simple situations we do not need it because uh, I will see it later. I, I will leave that explanation for uh, the subsequent class why we are uh, not going to use the energy equation. Although, uh, when you have a combustion kind of situation where there is non-uniform temperature and so on we will need to use the energy equation. So, we will eventually derive it, but at the moment I try to keep things simple energy deriving energy equation is uh, a little bit more uh, complex. Now, so we have three equations. Now, some of the things I want to see they are coupled equation because the variables appear in all the equation. They are non-linear you see the terms like rho du by dx. So, you have non-linear coupled partial differential equations okay. that is what we have. So, we have non-linear coupled partial differential equation and uh, these equations have 
very limited number of analytical solutions and often we will have to solve them numerically. But in linear acoustics we if we can uh, linearize this equation and write a linear then we can actually derive our linear wave equation and then we may be able to get exact analytical solutions. So that is what we will proceed to do in the next class what we do is we will linearize this conservation of mass and momentum and also linearize the state equation that means we will write variables as some mean quantity plus a fluctuating quantity and this fluctuating quantity will have a value which is much smaller than the mean quantity and then we will neglect product of two fluctuating quantities and we will uh, get this linear equations and uh, couple them we will do some algebraic manipulation and derive the linear wave equation and that that is what we do in next class. So to summarize what we did in this lecture we talked about what is uh, acoustics uh, we uh, uh, what, uh, talked a little bit about uh, what is there in the subject of acoustics we spoke about uh, what is a wave we talked about amplitude and frequency then we spoke about uh, various kind of infrasonic sound ultrasound and so on uh, we spoke about uh, practical situations where uh, what is the situ uh, decibel levels that we see then we said that we will attempt to derive conservation of mass momentum uh, etc and then we will uh, uh, and, and we derive these things in an attempt to be able to derive the wave equation which we will do in the next class. You should work out these exercises in the first exercise I want you to do a similar derivation for a variable area duct uh, where you have a general function a of x uh, varying slowly with x and derive the uh, following uh, governing equation that is this continuity equation which is the first equation given in the slide then the momentum equation the second equation uh, given the slide and the last equation is the energy equation please do this it is uh, quite a simple problem just do it carefully uh, the uh, the final equations are what are given here you should try to get this answer uh, then uh, the next question is let us consider two acoustic sources that are in phase each of them individually produces an acoustic pressure amplitude of 100 decimal what will be the amplitude of both of them if they are on simultaneously in phase uh, is it 200 dB or is it something else you will be tempted to say the answer is 200 dB but what is it uh, okay I will stop with this and uh, uh, have a good day we will uh, now in the next lecture we will proceed to derive the wave equation first and then get the solutions thank you. <laughs>